Way back. Some more of that killer frequency. Last playthrough. We saved the jazz lady from the whistling man. And we learned how to hotwire a car. Yeah. Now, that makes a total of three lives we've saved in total. First off, let me go ahead and put this back right here. I suppose I should take this call. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian Ponty. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? Oh, I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. But you really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals I'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Bro is self-promoting. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Poor choice of words tonight, I guess. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they didn't come out great. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. For, for, Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Nope. Nope. In flight check time. Christ. Our captain would like to remind you that the station is required by law to play advertisements from our sponsors. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. Done. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father, and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows oh Jr. And I approve this message. Is it over? God, what a d 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Uh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. 
Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. What's that? All right. Welcome to the Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and wait. wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Leslie left me in charge. I am 911. You haven't heard, have you? I'm guessing you've not been tuned in to our show tonight. Damn it, son. What does that have to do with anything? Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. He's dead. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. We're live on air. Just tell me what's happening. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Nah, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. I don't think it's a teen, and now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The Whistling Man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Can you get out of there? Think you can take the whistling man? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions? So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. And buy Maurice time. Again, exclusive. No, buy Maurice time. Buy Maurice time. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. And thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. This might be the first guy I kill on purpose. You... you don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell... I'm here. The freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Fax machine? I didn't know our fax machine number. Where's the fax machine? Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, go to the office on the other end of the hall, grab the fax from the machine, easy. I'm 
I'm not gonna hold you. I kinda don't like going down. It's, it feels so eerie. This must be it. Like, it feels really eerie. Did you get the fax? Yes, I have it. Yes, I have. Time to turn the music off. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him. Avoid the Whistling Man. Here's the situation. The Whistling Man searched every room in the hall, leading up to the boardroom. And now, he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Hold up. I'm saving this because I know I'm going to mess up. Like, I, I know I'm going to mess up. Though. So he's in the room next to Marie. What should I call the Lord of Killer? Let's see, so we can call the archive. We can call the kitchen. Call the, call the kitchen. The extension is zero two. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Go to the archive. Wait. On uh, second thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another. Time. He's right, Forrest. I can get another number ready, but we probably won't get to change our minds again. Where do you want me to call? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's if he's right beside him. the kitchen the extension okay. is zero two got it i'll put the call through when you're ready all right nash where do i need to go so if he's gonna call the kitchen we're gonna go to the archives you're moving to the archives the archives that's just across from the kitchen it's going to be tight are you sure nash i'm sure i'm ready to place the call are you ready mr russell don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to the kitchen. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? By the skin of my teeth, I am. 
He came out of the kitchen almost as soon as he entered. Thank God I made it in here just a second before. The killer already searched the kitchen. He probably didn't have to look around much. Did he see you? Are, are you safe for now? He didn't see me, no. Let me just check the security cameras to see where he went. Looks like he's heading towards the cubicles. We have enough intern desks to keep him busy for a little while. I'm not out of the woods yet, though. Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly, or quietly. Can you, find, can you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulation say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? You're a conspiracy fan, Peggy? Ah. I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. Will you two chatterboxes pipe down? I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Use a radio, use some bait. Is there a TV in there? Use a radio. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. Still in the office. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It should be here in the archives, actually. Let me just take a peek around. Great job, Forrest. Looks like you picked the perfect place. Congratulations later. Yep, exactly as planned. We hadn't found it yet. Let's congratulate ourselves later. I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Right, Maurice, turn the volume, turn the volume down. down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Uh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Ooh, man, Wait. I'm not ready. Ah. What now? I can't have this stupid thing turned up. How am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead. You just... Oh, that's a good point. But wait, we're the radio. We can just be quiet until you're ready. Eh, if you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16, I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? That's Greg. Get the finger, Peggy. The best and only. Right. You got it. 189.16. Good. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? He's already been to the kitchen. We're not going to do that again. And we have Maurice in the archives. Let's send him to the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. 
That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. Make the I'm call. sure. Make Here's the what call. I'm gonna do. I'm okay, calling the boardroom now. I'm gonna send him to the boardroom. Then I'm gonna have Maurice go in the office space. Then I'm gonna send him back to the archives. I'm gonna have Maurice go in the editors. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'll call the killer. I'll give big advice. I'll impersonate Mr. Russell. I'll pretend to tell Maurice to hide in the secret archive. The killer will hear me, go check it out, and we've got it. Oh, I like that. Make the killer think he has the upper hand, and then BAM! I appreciate the vote of confidence. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I... Uh, uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. What about the bathroom? Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. You reckon? I under the desk, hide in your cabinet, hide inside the secret archive, hide among the cubicle. Hmm. I get him killed in his cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Quick, Mr. Russell, hide in the back room in your office. Forrest, I don't think that was enough time for him to hide. Wait, really? Oh, sh**. Forrest Dash, you son of a bitch! I told you to... Forrest, he's... He's... Dead. Dead. <sighs> Let's put on a song. Give us some time. No, 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 no. I'm restarting that. I'm restarting that. I'm restarting that. I'm restarting that. Because I was right there. I was doing so good. I was right there, bro. I was right there. Time to recover. Mm -mm. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, in, I know I, I know I say I was going to get him killed before. But. I can't go out like that. I can't go out like that, bro. Alright, so we're gonna call it. We're gonna call, call the kitchen. Call the kitchen. The extension is zero two. Got it. I'll put Let the me, call I'm gonna restart the my way. actions. We'll be right, right back. Gosh. I'll be right back. Yep. That was a uh, 100% just me thinking ahead. Exactly as planned. I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Damn it! Did the killer hear that? Shit! Let me check the security cameras. I... I, I, I can't see him on the camera. I, I, I think... Oh. Don't say anything. Until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. Here we it's go. It's going to be all right. He won't look for you there. I promise. 
And Mr. Russell, be quiet. It's important you make no sound. Quick, Mr. Russell, hide in the back room in your office. Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up The Whistling Man. Forrest, you beautiful bastard! Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Frankly, neither can I. Was there any ever, ever doubt? If Was I'm being honest, I can't believe it either. Thank oh God, it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. We'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. There we are, folks. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. It ain't over, though. And play some killer tunes. Maurice Russell survived the Whistling Man. Yeah, because I had to start over. That's because the officer came. I didn't realize it was too late. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. What do you want to know? I'll regret this, but okay. Maybe I like being a mystery. Did it occur to you that maybe I like being a mystery? Too bad. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? <laughs> Come on, Peggy, that, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. No, it's okay, Peggy, that's how it goes. You're sorry, why? Did you do it? Don't be sorry, I'm not. Uh, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh, what happened there? Oh, oh, of course. Oh. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was Dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget Dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. What on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's KFAM regulations. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. That's good, I'm on it now. <sighs> Understood. I'm on it now. Oh, we calling it right here. Calling it right here. We calling it right here. We calling it right here. We don't the buzzer's know on happen. the front door. See you in a bit. We don't know what's going to happen next. We don't know what's going to happen next. Hmm. Because who's coming? Who's coming to the radio station this late at night? And and why? Ooh, this is this is getting this is getting kind of intense. I ain't gonna hold y'all. 
kind of more intense than when I had to help bro get out of that station. Hmm. Hmm. Yo, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to see where this goes, but we're going to call it right here for now. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You guys already know what to do. And peace.